dying, Christ defeated our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Joseph Grady Buckner put on Christ. So now in Christ, may Joseph Grady Buckner be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed to us, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this faith purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am direction, the resurrection, and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and of death. Because I live, you also shall live. Friends, we've gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate Joe's life. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss, that God may grant us grace, that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Will you stand with, with me and let us sing for the beauty of the earth? be seated here are accomplished enable us to die as those who go forth to live 
so that living or dying, our life may be in you, that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of those who have finished their course and now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you, and especially for Joseph, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all these who give grace and peace, let perpetual light shine upon them. Help them so to believe that where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into your joyful home, not made of hands, but eternal in the heavens, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There are several scripture lessons printed in your bulletin, and if I do not read them exactly as you see them printed on the page, I'm reading the same text. The first one is from the book of Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. The time to throw away stones, and the time to gather stones together. The time to embrace, and the time to refrain from embracing. The time to seek, and a time to lose. The time to keep, and a time to throw away. The time to tear, and a time to sow. The time to keep silence, and the time to speak. The time to love, and the time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. And continuing with Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes from the hills. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this day forth and forevermore. And then from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. What then are we to say about these things? God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave, but gave him up for us, will he not also give us everything else? Who will bring charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ who died, yes, who is raised, who is at the right hand of God, who in, indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then for the gospel lesson, I invite you to stand for the gospel lesson if you are able. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. The word of the Lord for all God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Um, Sorry, and I observed that some of you were looking for the gospel lesson, the rest of it, that was not printed in the bulletin that I read. Uh, I, it's a little bit of difference between the Methodist and the Lutheran worship funeral traditions, so I just added a little bit more to it. And, uh, Jesus, according to Matthew, told a story about a man who was going on vacation. And apparently he was taking a big vacation and could be gone for a while. And he realized he needed somebody to take care of his property while he was gone. So he called three of his servants to come in. And he said, I'm going away. You take this property and you handle it while I'm gone. And he gave one servant $5 million. He gave the other servant $2 million. And he gave the final servant $1 million. A million makes better sense to me and to you than talents does, but same thing. And after a while, the master came back and he called the servants back in to give a, an accounting of themselves. And the first one who received the $5 million came in and reported that he had re doubled his money, so he gave the master back $10 million. And the servant who had been given $2 million came, and he gave his master, he also had doubled his money and gave his master $4 million. And the master praised these servants greatly, and he said to them, Well done, good and trustworthy slaves. You have been trustworthy in a few things, and I have put, now I will put you in charge of many things. And most of you know the rest of the story anyway. The servant who got the one million hid it in the ground, and he came and offered to return it to the master. The master was not happy. So the question becomes, what have we done, you and me, with the talents that God put in our hands when we came to this place. From everything I know of Joseph Buckner, from all that I have heard from any of you, and I have heard from a few of you, and I knew him myself, all that I have heard and know, I think when he walked into heaven, God, Jesus said, Joe, come on in. Let's have a party. Because you used what I gave you to make a difference in other people's lives. A difference that improved other people. You made a difference that improved your church, your community, the people you work with, the world. And that's a reason to celebrate. Now, some of you know that I left off just a part of what Jesus, the master, said to the servants when they came in to report. To the, one who did, the ones who did good and used what God gave them for the purpose God had given it to them to make the world a better place, God said, come on in and let's celebrate. Enter the joy of your master. Come on in, Joe. Let's have a party. Let's celebrate together. 
I don't mean to be disrespectful of anything, but close your eyes for a second. Can you see Joe and God dancing around together in heaven? I can. Let's celebrate. Let's sing together. Let's laugh and dance together. And I think that's what's going on in heaven. All I knew of Joe and Pat was <clears throat> kindness, graciousness, love. The love that Pat and Joe shared is an example for all of us. When they said, promised to love and cherish in sickness and in health, they meant it. And they kept their promises to one another. Sort of understands about that kind of thing after being in a long-term marriage. I think that's a great, theirs is a great example for the rest of us to follow. So if you have a spouse sitting around you somewhere, squeeze their hand. Remember that commitment you made and follow that wonderful example. My wife told me that every time she sang at Acton Church and that Joe came by and had nice things to say to her and thanked her for singing. Now, I didn't know that. <laughs> This just the other day she and I were talking and she told me that. Somebody else told me that Joe was the financial secretary for a long time, kept up with a lot of financial records, and that he helped with church meals. I also was told that Pat and Joe adopted some young organist and choir director when they came to that church and helped them grow up, and heaven knows they needed it. And that they also provided them with decent food every once in a while. And it turned out well, because they're up in the, in the loft up there doing the music this morning. And that blessing that you gave to them is a blessing to all of us. So thank you for that. One of the most, I talked to Ken for a while one day this week and talked to Jody just a few minutes ago and she said she'd agree with most everything Ken said and uh, that it was I did not have the chance to talk to her but uh, Ken described his dad he said, as humble, kind, quiet, loving and said his uh, Dad loved his family and his church and other people, and I know he loved other people. And one of the most interesting things Ken told me about his dad, and, and by the way, I love it when people say to me, let me tell you about, because when they say, let me tell you about my dad, I find out things that I would never have known otherwise, and I f can feel the emotion and the love that's one of the best things about being a pastor is when people let you in their lives a little bit and share the joys and share the hurts and share the pain. But that may be the most interesting thing about Joe that Ken told me was that his dad let him learn the difficult way sometimes and would let him try things. And maybe I assume he probably did the same thing with Pat. I mean, uh, with Jody. He let you try things, and if it worked, wonderful. And if it didn't, I don't think he beat you over the head with it. But giving us the opportunity to learn and to grow and to become the people that God called us to be. So here we are today with minds that mourn with hearts that hurt, struggling to figure out how are we going to do life without Joe in it anymore. But we also thank God for allowing us to have had Joe in our lives for the time that we did. And as we mourn and celebrate Joe's life, we mourn and celebrate a life well lived. When Joe got to heaven, Jesus said, Welcome, Joe.
enter into the joy of your Lord. And thanks for sharing your love and faith with each of us. May we pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. We pray to you for, for one another in our hour of need and for everyone everywhere who mourns this day. To all who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, give strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep us true, keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. And in all our ways, we trust in you. And now, to you and your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory for now and forever. Amen. We will have a solo now. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He shall come and judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the life, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us, even to this day, for the gift of health and strength, for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in the days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our baptism and for our place in the church, with all who have faithfully lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our grief who died and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us commend Joseph to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your, your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Joseph. Acknowledge, we beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into your arms of mercy and into the blessed rest of eternal peace into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. 
Will you stand as we sing the hymn of promise? It's printed on a sheet of paper in your bulletin. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.